In this video, I'm going to show you why I paint using a wet palette. Hi everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. So in this video, I thought we'd have a look at wet palettes. This is because since my last video, where I showed you the process I use for thinning paints and getting smooth finishes. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, then please do check out this link above. But in that video, I obviously showed some examples of thinning the paint on my palette. Um, and I've had a lot of people since then asking questions about that palette, what paper I use and how it works, etc. So what I thought would be a good idea is put a short video together just explaining what a wet palette is, how you can make one yourselves and the advantages it brings you. So let's take a look. Okay then, so this is my wet palette. It's one I've been using for a few years now and frankly I'd be lost without it. I use it for all of my painting. It's one that I've made myself and it's very easy to do so I'll show you later on how you can make one for yourselves as well. So I would say when you start painting there's a few sort of key events that happen which trigger a big jump or a big spike in your advancement in painting, certain things that make things click. And for me I would say without any doubt the biggest jump in my ability of painting came when I started to use a wet palette. So why do you suppose that was? Well, up until then, I'd been using something like this, you know, a traditional dry palette. It's something I picked up at an art store and it seemed like the sort of thing I should be using. Um, it let me put paint in it and, and obviously I could thin things down with some water and it went quite well. But after a few minutes, I always found the paint was starting to dry or get clumpy. And I always felt like I was fighting against the paint. Whenever I get it to the nice consistency I needed, it would dry out. So then a friend suggested that I switch to a wet palette and it changed everything. And to explain why, let's just take a look at what a wet palette actually does. Let's start off then with an example of some paint on a dry palette. So what happens to it? Well, pretty much nothing. It's just sat there exposed to the air and eventually the moisture in the paint will start to evaporate away and your paint will start to dry out. And that's exactly what I was finding. As I was using it, it was already drying on the palette and before I knew it, it was too dry and I couldn't use it. Now the difference with a wet palette is it replaces that hard surface with a couple of layers. The first one is a reservoir which will hold your water and then between your reservoir and your paint you have a membrane and that membrane will allow a little bit of moisture through into the paint but not let the paint sort of seep back into your reservoir and then the advantage of that is that the moisture from your water reservoir will absorb into the paint and basically offset the evaporation that's happening from the air and thereby keep your paint wet for longer. Well that's brilliant so that's why it solved the problem I was having with it drying too quickly on my dry palette. Quick word of warning, there is um, obviously limitations to this. So the main one being that you can't control how much moisture is actually absorbed into your paint. So you do still need to do your paint management and make sure that you keep it to the level of consistency that you're wanting it. And the other thing is that you shouldn't really consider this as a way to prolong your paint to use day after day. I prefer to use it more in terms of extending the paint so I can use it over a longer painting session. Anything above and beyond that really should just be considered a bonus. Okay, so we now know that a wet palette is great for extending the usefulness of your paint during your painting session. So what's the easiest way to get one? Well, you can now go out and buy them, but when I first started painting, that wasn't an option. And you can actually very easily make one yourself for very little money. So let's have a look at that. And the first thing you're going to need is a plastic airtight container, which is going to form the basis of your palette. You want to try and make it as shallow as possible because you don't want to be reaching over a high edge when you're painting. So this is probably about an inch, maybe. Uh, that's about right for me. And you can get it as big or as small as it will fit on your desk, really. Right, I'm just going to pop the lid off and put that to one side for now. And then we can start adding the first element to the wet palette. And that's going to be the layer to form the reservoir to hold the water. And for this, I'm just going to use some basic kitchen roll or paper towel. And I'm just going to take several layers of this. So I think I've got about 10 sheets here. It's going to take two at a time and I'm just going to fold them and place them into the bottom of my plastic container. Trying to alternate them so that the fold is on either side for each layer, I guess, just to try and make it as smooth and level as possible. But you don't really need to be that accurate. It's fine. Just fold them in and then we'll move on to the next stage. 
While I'm just folding these pieces of paper in, it's probably worth talking about how big a reservoir you really need to have. And that depends pretty much on the humidity and temperature of your environment. So if you're fortunate enough to live in a hot country and it's humid all the time and things evaporate really quickly, then you're gonna need a bigger reservoir to hold the water. In fact, it's probably a good idea that you replace this paper towel with something more robust, something more like a sponge that can hold a lot more moisture. And you can probably go for a lot thicker as well. Basically something that's gonna hold a big enough volume of water to offset the amount which is going to evaporate from your paint. Right, now it's time to add some water and all you need to do is just completely saturate the paper towel until it is soaking. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more water there until it's completely drenched. And now I'm just gonna press out any trapped air pockets. So basically any air that's caught between the different layers and just make sure that that water gets into all of the paper towel and it's fully saturated. So I'm just starting from the middle and just pressing out to the edges just to get rid of all that trapped air and uh, making sure that everything is nice and compressed. Right then, so now I'm gonna pour away all of the excess water that I have left in the container. So a lot of people do ask, how much water are you supposed to add to your wet palette? And this is by far the easiest way I found. So just completely saturate the paper, press out any air bubbles, and then just drain off any excess, and you're done. Right, so now it's time to add our next layer and that's gonna be the membrane that the paint is gonna sit on. And for this, you're gonna need some parchment baking paper. So this is a baking product and you can get it quite a lot of different places, but it is easily confused with other paper products. So don't confuse this, for example, with greaseproof paper or wax paper. It's a very different thing. This actually lets a little bit of moisture through. For this exact product, I've put a link in the description below so that you can pick it up where I get it from. It's actually really cheap because you get 19 meters per roll. Okay then, so let's take a look at it, and it's not particularly very exciting looking. It's brown in colour, it's a little bit transparent, and it doesn't have any particular side to it, so you don't have to worry about which way round you put it. All you need to do is pull a bit out and size it up against your wet palette and then cut it to size. And then you just take that size sheet and place it on top of the wet towel and press it down so it starts to absorb that moisture. By which I mean it will just go slightly damp, it's not supposed to go soggy. Oh, one good tip, don't throw away your offcuts because the paper's actually really useful for when you're starting to make tufts because it acts as a good non-stick paper. But I'll talk more about that in a future video. Okay then, so now the uh, palette's pretty much ready to start painting on. Just give it a bit of a smooth down. You might find that some excess water settled on the top. You can just get some paper towel and mop that up if you like. And then the palette's ready to start painting. So let's have a look at a few tips on how best to use your palette. Starting off with adding paint to the palette. So what I like to do is get a small amount of the paint of each color that I'm gonna be using and arrange that across my palette. And then for each of those colors, I like to give it its own separate little droplet of water using a little pipette. And then I can use that droplet of water just for thinning down that color of paint and not risk contaminating the other colors. And then when you are thinning your paints, what you want to do is you want to draw a little bit out at a time and only work on a small amount of paint at once. This is because it's better to keep the paint heaped up because it will retain its moisture and not dry out as quickly that way. Whereas if you spread it all out, then the surface area will still be exposed and it'll still evaporate off quite quickly. Another advantage that I find to having the paints laid out in this way is it makes it so much quicker and easier just to dip into each of the colors that you need and you can mix them together to make different transitions and blends for when you're working on your model. Another question I had was, is the process any different for when you're working with a medium? And it's not. All I do is I apply a small amount of the medium as a little blob next to the paint, just as I would do if it was water. And then I can just dip into that and use that to thin down the paint as I would as if it was the water. 
Now one reason why you might want to use a medium rather than water to mix the paint is if you want to thin the paint down past the point where it would split if you used water. And what I mean by splitting is where you add so much water that the paint no longer has any integrity and it won't mix together anymore. Whereas if you use medium, what it'll do is it will maintain its integrity and still behave like a wash. And then lastly, the most asked question I've had about wet palettes was, do I use metallics on them and do I thin them in the same way? And the answer is yes, absolutely. I use metallics on my wet palette and the process for thinning them is exactly the same as I did in the paint thinning video. Now there are some people who say never to use metallics on a wet palette and that's because there's a risk that you could get metallic flecks into the water reservoir layer and contaminate your other paints. That's never really concerned me. It's usually pretty obvious when paint gets through the membrane anyway. And if it ever happened, all I would do is just replace the paper towel and the membrane and start again which as you see is really quick and easy to do and if you're using parchment paper and paper towel it's really cheap to do as well so it's never been a problem. And then finally when you're in between painting and you're just waiting for things to dry on the model then you can just put the lid back on and keep that paint nice and fresh until you're ready to use it again. But as I said earlier in the video, this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to last day after day. More often than not, I will only ever use it for one painting session at a time. I just put the lid back on when I'm waiting for something to dry and I don't want my palette to dry out in the meantime. What I will do at the start of each painting session is I'll just replace the membrane on the top and maybe add a little bit more water to the reservoir underneath to make sure that's fully stocked and then I'm ready to go again. And that's all there is to it. I really hope that's helped explain wet palettes to you and the reasons why I use mine. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please do give it a like. If you'd like to see more of these videos, then please do drop a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do consider hitting that subscribe button and supporting the channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. And finally, I'd love it if you stayed on the channel and checked out some more of my videos. So if you haven't already done so, I highly recommend that you check out my paint thinning video. Or how about my latest painting video where you can see all of these techniques being put to good use.